Chapter Seventeen of the Outdoor Chums in the Big Woods. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Outdoor Chums in the Big Woods by Captain Quincy Allen. Chapter Seventeen The Big Moose. A bull moose, you say, Will? echoed Bluff, his face lighting up with sudden energy. "'That's what I mean,' replied the other. "'I know what you're thinking, Bluff, and that I wouldn't know a bull moose if I saw one, but you're away off in your guess. I've so longed to meet up with one when I had my camera with me that I've been picturing how he'd look. And, Frank, believe me, it was a beaut, a regular monster!' "'How did it happen, Will?' asked Frank. "'I was sitting as still as anything,' the other related. After I'd got two dandy snaps at that funny squirrel family playing around the tree where they have their home, and was hoping for another whack at them to complete the set, when all at once I heard a whiffing sound. "'Gee, what I wouldn't give to have been alongside with my gun,' sighed Bluff. "'But go on, Will. What happened next?' "'Oh, I looked up to see what had made that queer sound, and there he was, just standing and looking straight at me. I was nearly scared to death at first, for he looked nearly as big as a barn. Then I knew it must be a bull moose, and the next thing I found myself taking his picture. "'Did he run away, then?' asked Frank. "'Turned and trotted off, as if he didn't care whether school kept or not,' Will continued. "'I even had the nerve to shoot him again as he was going, and don't I hope that first picture turns out good. It was a remarkable pose, if only the focus was right.' He started toward the cabin door, as though anxious to develop his roll of film and discover what success his labor had resulted in. Bluff caught him by the arm. "'Wait just a minute or two, Will,' he pleaded. "'Tell us some more. Where did all this happen?' "'Frank knows where the squirrel colony have their nest in the tree that's got a hole in the trunk about thirty feet up,' the other replied. "'But you're dead sure, aren't you? It wasn't just a big buck deer you saw?' continued Bluff who apparently could not bring himself to believe that a mighty moose had wandered that near the camp. "'If only you'll hold your horses until I can develop this film, you shall see for yourself whether I know a stag from a bull moose,' he was told by the indignant photographer, as the latter broke away and vanished inside the cabin. Bluff turned to Frank. "'Let's all take a look,' he suggested. "'I was just going to say the same myself,' Jerry added, being evidently quite as much interested as Bluff. Frank was more than willing. He did not feel that they could entirely depend on the evidence of Will, who may have been so startled by the sudden coming of some animal that his imagination worked overtime. "'I hope it wasn't just a mule that strayed away from some lumber camp,' he told the others, as they hurried off but not before Bluff and Jerry had darted inside the cabin and reappeared carrying their guns. "'They do say a moose has the same sort of head as a mule,' Bluff admitted. "'But then Will vows it had horns, terribly big horns, which no mule I ever saw could boast of owning.' "'Well, chances are it was a bull moose,' Frank admitted. "'But we'll soon know.' "'That light snow falling last night was in our favor, for the tracks will show up well,' suggested Jerry." "'Here's the place,' Frank told them a short time afterward. "'You can see the tree with the hole in it over there, "'and I think I even saw a squirrel frisk out of sight as we came up.' "'Yes, and here's where Will made himself a seat,' added Bluff. "'He fixed it so he could sit comfortably "'and not have to frighten the family of bushy tails by moving. "'Now he didn't say he turned his head, "'just looked up when he first heard that queer noise.' "'Yes,' said Jerry, "'which would make it over there that the thing showed up.' Let's take a look at the ground and see if Will was dreaming or not. Before half a minute had passed, Frank was pointing to certain marks plainly seen in the inch and more of snow that had fallen on the previous night, perhaps as a sort of forerunner of the coming storm. There you are, fellows, he announced. All stared hard at the monstrous tracks. Bluff even got down on hands and knees in order to see better. It was a moose, all right, Frank, said Jerry. "'From the prints made by its big split hooves, I'm pretty sure of that,' Frank asserted. "'I'm beginning to believe Will was not so far out of the way after all when he said it might be the giant of all Maine moose.' Bluff got up again, shaking his head. "'Oh, the meanest luck that ever was!' he lamented. 
why couldn't i have taken a notion to step out here with will to watch the way he took the pictures of that squirrel family i'd have had my gun across my knees with buckshot and every shell of course think how easy i could have dropped him with such a short distance between it's cruel that's what it is jerry clapped him on the shoulder tell me what's to hinder a couple of us going after the old chap bluff he asked in an eager voice "'You'll have to count me out of that deal,' Frank told them. "'You remember that I sprained my ankle yesterday, and a long walk would lay me up. "'If anybody goes, it will have to be you two. "'Jerry looked at Bluff. "'I dare you,' he said. "'No need of that,' came the reply. "'Because I'd be willing to start after that moose alone and follow him for a week "'if I thought I could get a fair crack at him in the end.' "'Then it's a go, Bluff?' asked Jerry, greatly pleased, for up to now he had not been given much of a chance to bring down any big game on this trip, and was secretly chafing. They shook hands on the bargain, and so it was ratified. "'When ought we to make the start?' asked Jerry impetuously. "'The sooner the better, so as to keep his lead cut down as much as we can,' he was told by Bluff, after which they both turned toward Frank, for after all it would be from this quarter that the signal to start must eventually come. "'No need of rushing off as though you were crazy,' Frank told them. "'Will says the moose didn't act as though it was badly frightened by seeing him, "'so it isn't likely it will cover a great many miles before stopping again. "'Lunch must be nearly ready. "'You must stop long enough to eat a lot, "'because there's no telling when you may get another square meal.' "'Bluff glanced quickly at Frank. "'Oh, we won't get lost,' he said loftily. "'Both of us have been around some in the woods, "'and besides, I always carry a compass.' "'I wasn't thinking so much of that as the chance of a blizzard coming down on you,' Frank continued. "'Be sure to take along an extra supply of matches. "'I'll see to it that each of you has something to help make out a meal or so. "'It won't weigh heavy, but if you do need it, you'll thank me for it.' "'Bluff and Jerry may have considered Frank a bit too old womanish, "'making all that fuss over just going off on a little chase after a wandering moose.' frank however understood what a blizzard meant up there in maine he had been in one or two himself and would not care to repeat certain experiences that had come his way unless well provided against hunger and bitter cold the three soon reached the cabin it chanced that just then the call to the midday meal came will was too busy working at his developing tank to sit down with the rest plenty of time when i get through with this he told them "'Give me five minutes more to get this film in fresh water, and then I'll come.' Bluff and Jerry were hurrying as fast as they could. Frank had redeemed his promise to see that there was something put up in small shape that would help out for supper in case they were delayed. He also thrust several small boxes of safety matches into each of their coats, and made sure Bluff had his compass. "'Well,' said Will, stepping forward and holding up a dripping film, "'Take a peep at this, will you, and tell me if I know what I'm talking about or not.' As soon as the boys saw the splendid negative in clear-cut lights and shadows, they burst into a chorus of cries. "'It's a moose, all right, Will,' Frank told the proud photographer. "'And sure a whopper, just as you said,' added Bluff. "'We take it all back,' Jerry vowed. "'After this, we'll own up that you know a bull moose from a mule or a buck deer every time.' "'That's going to be a prize picture, all right.' Those last words from Frank made Will very proud. "'I believe myself that I never got such splendid effects,' he exclaimed. "'Why, I warrant you can see every hair on his head. Just look how I got him square in the middle of my plate. It's better to be born lucky than rich any day.' "'I'm done eating,' announced Bluff. "'Couldn't cram another bite down after seeing that picture.' jerry proclaimed as he darted over to the corner where his rifle stood and began to buckle on the webbed belt filled with cartridges wear your sweaters and be sure your woolen gloves are in your pockets cautioned weatherwise frank he hovered about the pair and constantly warned them against carelessness i hope you get that big moose he told them as they all pushed outdoors but don't take too many big chances we would feel pretty sorry if anything happened to mar our holiday up here "'Frank, you can depend on us to be careful,' Bluff told him earnestly. "'But for goodness sake, don't worry about us. "'We're not the babes in the woods, you know. "'If I do say it myself, we've had our eye-teeth cut for some time. 
there never was such a bully chance to get a big moose and we want to do our level best look for us when we come if we don't show up by night why chances are we found ourselves so far away that we concluded to make camp bluff and jerry shook hands gravely all around even with teddy good luck and i hope you get him said that individual meaning every word for he had already come to care a great deal for these jolly boys who had been the means of helping him over a very rough place in the road got everything now asked bluff i should hope so grunted jerry we'd be pack horses if we tried to carry any more truck along of course frank told them laughingly but if you should have to stay overnight you'll miss your blankets the worst way well so long boys and we all wish you success turning bluff and his chum started for the spot where the trail of the big moose was to be taken up end of chapter seventeen